Wouldn't it be great if there was a way to bring data to your Airtable base from an external source and keep it up to date with a click of a button? This is possible using the Airtable scripting feature and in this video I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. At a basic level, scripting makes it possible to write simple programs using JavaScript that create and update records in your base. What's really cool though is that JavaScript allows you to make requests to APIs of third-party services to retrieve or send data. In this example, I have a base where I keep track of stock data and my goal is to retrieve the latest data for each stock from an API called stockdata.org and update my base records with it. So here I am inside my Airtable base and as you can see, I have uh, a table called stocks. On this table, there are only two fields, name and price, and currently have five stock records right here. Uh, these are the, the stock symbols. And here, my goal is to populate this field with the price of the stock. And I want this to be dynamic. I want this price to be um, to, to get updated every day without me having to do any manual work. So um, the way I'm going to achieve that is by creating a script. And to create a script, you have to go to apps, add an app, and then select scripting. So scripting is an app created by Airtable. And as you can see, it allows you to write your script right here, which needs to be in JavaScript. Um, and I'm going to start off by defining a variable here. I'm going to call it API token. And this will store the API token that I need in order to authenticate to my stock, to the to the stockdata.org API. So this is the API that contains all the stock information I need. Uh, and in order to, to obtain an API token, you have to create an account with this service. So here's mine. I'm gonna copy and paste it there. It's a string. So uh, the next thing I need to do is uh, get a reference uh, so, so my goal is to basically read, first of all, my goal is to read all these records, right? I want, um, I want to retrieve all the records and then for each one, get the, the price from the API and update it in this field, right? Now, in order to get um, uh, the records, I first need to get a reference to the, to the table. So I'm going to create a variable called table and then uh, I'm going to say base dot get table and then in the brackets i'm going to i'm going to add the name of my table which is stocks so this is going to create a reference to that table and then the next thing i want to do is actually get the records of the table so i'm going to create a variable called records and in order to get the records you need to do a table right so the reference you have to the table uh, and then call the function select records, uh, select records async, right? That's the function that's going to get the, um, that's the function that's going to get the, the, the records of your table. Now this is a, an asynchronous function. So in order for me to actually get the data, I need to do a wait here. So I'm basically waiting for the function to retrieve the data, uh, before, before I move on. So, um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a console.log and I'm going to log the records this I'm going to log the, the the value of these um of this variable right here just to see if it works so far so I'm going to click run and as you can see it retrieves um uh, the, the result is an object which uh contains two uh two arrays so the first array is called record IDs and this is basically an array with the IDs of each one of these records and then there's another array which contains an object with the data of each one of these uh, records. So we got the ID and the name. There we go. So this is the one I actually want to, uh, to get access to because uh, my goal is to get the name of the stock. I need to pass this name um, to the API when I'm making the, the API request to retrieve the stock data. Therefore, I need to get access to this records array. Now, there's there's multiple ways to to do that. So I could 
Let me just make this a little bit bigger here. If I can, I can't. That's fine. Um, so I could do records.records .records, and that will actually get me the objects that I need. But uh, a nicer way of doing the same thing would be uh, basically surrounding this with curly brackets. And this is a, a process called object destructuring, if I remember correctly. Um, and I basically say that I want the records object within within this uh, result, right? So if I console log this now, as you can see, the result is the same. I'm getting those. Uh, I'm getting I'm getting an array with those objects. Great. So next thing I want to do is actually iterate through these records. And for each one, make an API call to 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 uh, get the stock information. So uh, the way I'm going to do that is by uh, creating a for loop. So for let record of records. So this is my for loop, and I'm basically looping over records here. Uh, and for each record, so this is a new variable here. Um, I want to perform an API call. So I'm going to do let stock price equals await fetch. And then here is where I need to add the uh, URL of the API that I want to make a request to. So the way I'm going to get the URL is by going to the API here and then opening up the documentation page. And this is where the API is documented. Now, my goal is to get um, real-time stock quotes. I'm going to copy this, um, this link address right here. And I'm going to paste it here. I'm just going to open that, this app in full screen so we can see all the code. Um, so here, as you can see, so this is the the base URL right here, but then we have a symbols parameter. We also have an API token parameter. So in the symbols, what I want to do is uh, replace this with the name, the, the symbol of the stock that I want to get the data of. Now, this is actually part of the record, right? So this these these are the records, right? These are the record objects. And within each object, there is a name, right? That's the name field in my table. And that's the symbol I want to add right here. So um, in order to get that, I'm going to do I'm, I'm going to do record dot name. And the way that you can add a uh, the value of a of a of a variable inside a string is by using template writ literals. So the way you um, use template writ literals is first of all you gotta replace these quotes with uh, backticks, and then here I'm gonna do the dollar symbol and then open curly brackets, close curly brackets, and inside here I'm gonna say record dot name, right? So I'm accessing this thing here, and then. I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to copy this and replace it with this your API token part. And here, my goal is to uh, replace this with my API token, which I created a variable here, a variable for right here. So I'm just going to copy and paste that there. And yeah, that's going to replace this part with my API token. Great. So this uh, this should be a valid API endpoint. So what I'm going to do now is just console.log stock price just so I can see what I get back. And I'm going to run this. OK, so the reason we're not getting anything is because we first need to uh, convert the output to JSON. Um, and to do that, I'm going to do let data equals um, await. So this is asynchronous. 
stockprice.json. So I'm basically converting the response of the API to JSON. And now I'm going to console.log the data. Run. There we go. So um, as you can see, so th 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 these are the responses we get from the API. And since we got five records um, that we're making re API requests for, uh, we get five responses. Now, within the response object, we have um, we have a meta object which doesn't doesn't have much useful information. The useful information is actually in this data array right here. And since I'm only requesting one um, one stock, the the data of one stock at a time, uh, the array only has one object in it. So um, if I want to access uh, if I want to access this object each time, what I need to do is uh, data dot data first element, which is the the element with index zero inside the array, uh, and that should actually give me this data for each of my yeah there we go for each of my requests. Now um, there is a nicer way of writing this. So once again, I can do object destructuring by adding, surrounding this data uh, with this data variable with uh, curly brackets. So now I can get rid of this part. And that should get me the same result. There we go. And then from this data object, I actually want to access the price. So that's the thing I care about. But obviously, you know, you could use all this data. And if, if you have multiple fields in your in your table here, you can uh, we, you can populate them with the data you receive from the API. But for this example, I'm just going to get the price. So um, so I'm going to do uh, I'm going to create I'm actually going to create a new variable called price, and I'm going to get data the first uh, element of that array and then dot price. So now if I console log price and run this again, as you can see, I'm getting the prices, um, the price of each stock. So now finally, the, the goal is to actually update that price field on my table. So uh, the way I'm going to do that is with table. So once again, I'm getting the reference to the table and then table um, dot update record async and then I need to pass a reference to the record I want to update and in this case it's uh the, the record is the the record that is currently part of that I'm currently iterating through in the in the for loop so I'm just going to say record um and then I need to provide the change I want to make so it's going to be an object and what I want to change is the price field and I want to set it to the value of this variable right here. So it's going to be price. Um, and this is asynchronous. So I'm going to say await. And I'm just going to remove that console log. So I think that's that should be that should be it. That should work. So now if I run this, we should see the prices get populated in this field. Great, so that worked as expected. Now I'm actually gonna go ahead uh, and add an additional field to this uh, table. Uh, I wanna get the exchange of each stock and I'm gonna store it. It's gonna be a, a field of type single line text because this is just a, a piece of text. Uh, and in the data I'm getting back from the API, as you can see here in the documentation, uh, the exchange uh, is stored under an element called exchange short. So this is the, the version I want. There's obviously an exchange long, but um, I'm going to go with the short one. Um, and I'm going to create a new variable here called exchange. And I'm going to access the element which is inside the data array at index zero. So that's the only object in the array and then exchange short. That's the element. 
and then I'm simply gonna take this variable and here where I'm updating my record, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna add the name of the field. So the field is called exchange. And then I wanna assign the uh, value of the variable to be the value of that field. So now if I go ahead and actually run this, as you can see, it works as expected. So there you have it, an Airtable script that retrieves data from an external source and updates record fields with it. Now depending on the API you choose to get the data from, your code will look slightly different and having some JavaScript knowledge is useful. But in general, the structure of the code should always be the same. Let me know in the comments below what other automations you would like to build with Airtable scripting and I might do a video on it. With that said, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.